This is the second part of a multi-part episode for integrating Active Directory with Apex One as a service. In the previous video, we have successfully configured the AD Sync Agent tool. In this video, we will be configuring Apex Central to be a trusted party of our ADFS server as part of our integration prerequisites. Make sure to watch the previous parts first to be able to keep up. So, to configure this, go to the ADFS server and open the ADFS Management Console and click Add Relying Party Trust, then click on Start. For the data source, select Enter Data about the Relying Party manually. Next, specify the display name for the Relying Party. Under Configure URL, put a check under Enable Support for the SAML 2.0 Web SSO Protocol. Now, we need to enter the URL for our Apex Central, so switch back to the Apex Central console. Then copy the server console URL and paste it on the relying party trust wizard. Make sure to change the link redirection from index.html to login.aspx, then click on Next. For the relying party trust identifier, we just need to enter the Apex Central FQDN and click on Add and then click on Next. Also for the policy, select Permit Everyone and click on Next. Skip the Ready to Add Trust, click on Next and close the Relying Party Trust wizard. Once the wizard is closed, the Claim Issuance Policy for Apex One window will pop out. Now click on Add Role. This will open the Select Rule template. Under the Rule Type drop-down menu, select Pass-Through or Filter an Incoming Claim. Ask the Claim Rule and click on Next. On the Claim Rule configuration, specify the Claim Rule name and under the Incoming Claim Type drop-down menu, select Windows Account Name. Then, select Pass-Through All Claim Values and click on Finish. And finally, click on Apply and click OK. We have now successfully added Apex Central as a trusted party on our ADFS server. The next step that we need to do is to enable Active Directory authentication with our Apex Central. However, we still need a couple of information in order for us to configure this on our Apex Central server. So while we are on the ADFS server, we will be exporting the certificate as well as copying the service identifier. On the ADFS Management Console, click on Service, then select Edit Federation Service Properties. Under the Federation Service Identifier, copy the URL and save it on a notepad. Next, on the ADFS Management Console, expand Service and select Certificates. On the Token Signing Certificate, right-click on it and select View Certificate. On the Details tab, Click on Copy to File, then click on Next. For the export file format, select base 64 encoded x509 and click on Next. Enter the file name on the directory where you want to save the exported file, then click on Next, and then click on Finish. Copy the exported certificate to the machine where you access the Apex Central Server Console. Now, Open the Apex Central Web Console and select Enable Active Directory Authentication. Under the Service Identifier, copy the identifier that we saved earlier on the notepad from the ADFS server. Make sure that the URL is set to HTTPS. If not, you can just edit it from HTTP to HTTPS. Next, on the Signing Certificate, choose the file that we have copied earlier. Once this is done, click on Save. The Active Directory authentication is now enabled. So now we need to test it to verify if the configuration is working. In order for us to test the configurations we have made, we can create a new user account. To create an account, go to Administration, select Account Management, and click on User Accounts. On the User Accounts page, click on the Add button. This will ask to enter the information needed for the new account. For the user information, select Active Directory User or Group. Type in your username, then click on the Search button. 
To add the user from the search result, select the user and click on the right arrow button to move it to the selected users slash groups then click on next. Here, we need to assign a role for the new user. In this demo, we are assigning it as Administrator and DLP Compliance Officer. So using the drop-down menu bar, select Administrator and DLP Compliance Officer. Put a check on Apex Central as a service folder to gain access to all the resources and make sure that all accesses rights are enabled. Once this is done, click on Save. Now that we have created a new account authenticated by our Active Directory, we can now log off from our current account. To log off, click on the username and select Log Off. And finally, to test if the configuration is working, we will now log in to Apex Central Console using the newly account we have created. On the Apex Central Console, log into the page and type in your domain slash username and press Tab. This will redirect you to your ADFS portal and will ask you for your Active Directory password. Type in your Active Directory password and click on Sign In. We have now successfully logged into our Apex Central Web Console using our Active Directory user account. With Active Directory integrated, events coming in from Apex One as a service and other Trend Micro products like Cloud App Security will be properly correlated in Trend Micro XDR. In the upcoming episodes, we will be testing the connection between Apex One as a service and Trend Micro XDR by triggering different events from the endpoint. Be sure to check those out. If you wish to know more about configuring Apex One with XDR, be sure to watch the other videos in this series. I hope this has been informative for you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next Trend Micro XDR guide.